And can you see that now, Jason? Yep, I got it. Okay, distracted driving. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about uh, a few things that apply to us as far as driving goes. It's something we all do. And we'll talk about a few things that might distract us or get in the way of us doing it safely. And uh, there's a few statistics we'll look at. And the, and the goal is to just raise awareness to that and talk about how we can be distracted, how it impacts us as a driver, and uh, the end result that could happen if we're not paying attention on the roadway. So the goal is to keep safe, and uh, we'll talk through that today. So as we go through this, think about where you drive. Think about where you go. Think about any behaviors or regular things you do while driving that might become a distraction to you and hopefully we can all learn something and take away from that and improve our driving out there. Um, that's really the goal. So what is the problem? What's the problem with distracted driving? Uh, we can learn from a lot of statistics and, and data that's put out by the state. Uh, it comes from the Utah Department of Public Safety and every few years they put some numbers up on their website highwaysafety.utah.gov. They'll put some things up there that talk about What's causing crashes? Why are, why are accidents happening? Why do fatalities happen? And what are the trends going on in the driving around the state? And today we'll specifically look at the distracted driving side of things and see what we can learn from that. Um, looks like about 9% of uh, Utah crashes in 2016 were involving a distracted driver and 54% of those crashes were a rear end crash. Somebody not paying attention, distracted for some reason, and hitting into the back of another car. And this resulted in 27 deaths that year. So it can be a problem and, and it's one of the top five things that, that cause uh, crashes in the state, which we'll look at. So these numbers come from 2016. Like I say, they do this every few years and uh, we, we can always learn from these things. The top reason in 2016 for distracted driving crashes was use of a cell phone. And that's probably no surprise at all. Um, you've probably seen people driving down the road, uh, swerving in and out of lanes, not paying attention, and you drive up along the side of them and see them messing with their phone or on the phone. Uh, it definitely is a huge distraction that we'll talk about today and, and things that we can do to prevent that. Um, but the other causes of crashes for distracted driving in that year were uh, other distractions inside or outside of the vehicle. Uh, could be passengers, uh, looks like radios, uh, DVDs, CDs, distracted uh, drivers there, other electronic devices, and of course texting. You've all heard about the dangers of texting and driving. Uh, we'll talk on that some more. A little bit surprising to me that texting was number seven on that list. I would think that would have been higher that year. Perhaps uh, some of that fell into the cell phone category on that one. But those are all things that can distract us and that's what has distracted drivers around the state um, in recent years. So what else were we seeing from trends uh, from the state? If you look at the, the maps they put out here, it's got it by county, and you'll see some are red, some are blue, and some are white. The red ones actually have the highest rate of crashes um, in 2016 by county. And so it uh, looks like Cash, Utah, Weber, and Grand counties had the highest percentage of crashes uh, for distracted driving that year. Um, and you can see it's the, the more populated areas might have some more of those as well. Um, probably no coincidence there that there's more people, higher, higher population, higher congestion on the roadways, and a distraction there can be catastrophic. Um, looking at hours of the day, there were, there were information they looked at what time of the day were distracted drivers causing crashes, and looks like the peak time was between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. And we could ask ourselves, well, why? Why is it during that time? Why do we see uh, more crashes then? Uh, could be for various reasons. It could be that it's at the end of the work day, that people have worked a long day and they're tired or they're distracted for, for other reasons. Uh, maybe they're trying to get home at the end of the day and, and making calls or picking up phones or running errands or doing other things that distract them. Um, so we just need to think about as we go around, as we drive around and do the things we do, uh, think about where we're going, think about time of day, think about the risks, think about the routes you take, and uh, watching out for, for things that might distract you or things that could distract other drivers. Um, but those are things that we can learn from, from their numbers there. Uh, they also looked at the age of the drivers who was causing the most distracted driving crashes. And it's interesting to look at this graph. We've seen it this way uh, for a few years now. That it's the younger drivers that consistently have higher rates of, of crashes involving distraction. Um, you can see that graph goes down as, as you know, with the age along the bottom. Um, maybe people are getting better with age or not being as distracted or they're learning from experience over the years. Um, but younger drivers do have uh, a lot more potential to be distracted and cause crashes there. 
So if you have younger drivers at home, or if you are a younger driver, maybe you have kids or grandkids that are learning to drive, um, we need to make sure we're doing our part to teach them to prevent uh, distractions in the cars as, we're, as they're driving around. Uh, Utah has a zero fatalities campaign. I know you've probably heard a lot about this. They have commercials on TV, they have a website, um, and they're also tracking what's causing accidents on the roadways. They, they highlighted uh, 120 teens that have lost their lives on roadways, and a lot of these were to distraction. Um, they actually have stories on there about this, and the goal is to get this information out there to teach people to avoid distractions on the roadways and, and prevent accidents. Um, so that's something we can all learn from from their, their campaign as well. So Department of Public Safety, they, they call distracted driving a number five leading cause of death um, for, for traffic crashes. And they looked at numbers on the five-year span between 2012 and 2016, and they found that there was 108 deaths due to distracted driving in the state, 9% of all the deaths on the roadways um, from crashes on the roadways. And the Zero Fatalities Campaign also called distracted driving a top five deadly behavior. Um, that they identified. So it really is a big deal. It really does cause accidents and uh, we want to learn to prevent that and avoid those um, in ways that we can. So let's look at cell phones versus texting. Uh, over the last 10 years, Department of Public Safety looked at this and they were starting to see an increase in uh, traffic accidents involving cell phone use. And, and those blue bars indicate the, the cell phone, whereas the red indicate texting. And you can see there's also been an increase in the amount of texting uh, distracted crashes. Um, so those are things to think about. It's, it may not be that worth that risk to you to pick up that phone, uh, to send off a text, or even if you have somebody that is driving, to send them a text that might distract them. Um, those are things to think about. The, the use of the phone and, and the hazards there is a real problem um, for accidents everywhere, really. So we need to think about it. What is the risk? And, and we can be driving about our day. We can be, be going along with things and we might just think, oh, it's just one second. One second I can take my eyes off the road. I can pick up that phone. I can read that text. It may only take a second or two and, and it, it might not be worth it. It might not be worth that risk to possibly cause a crash by taking your eyes off the road. Uh, it might be one moment. It might be one simple minute that you're looking away or picking something up, just one little object you're reaching for. Uh, one little thing that takes your eyes off the road or, or causes you not to focus for a little bit can cause that crash and that accident. And you have to think about, you know, am I really focused on what's right here? Am I really on the priority? Or am I taking chances and putting my life at risk? Um, just a reminder that it's really not worth it. If you don't have to take that extra risk and uh, you don't have to lose your focus or your awareness about driving, it's not worth taking that one second to, to possibly cause an accident. So we need to think about what is it out there that can distract us. And, and I want you to think about now, what could distract you? What could be that next thing in your car as you're driving down the road that could distract you from keeping yourself and others safe in your vehicle? Uh, to keep you from getting to your destination, what is it out there um, that could cause that? So I'm gonna run down about 10 things right now, things that stand out that could be some real distractions. And I want you to think if that applies to you or if there's something you want to do to uh, eliminate that or make yourself a better driver by eliminating things that could be a distraction for you. Okay, so we'll look at those now. Uh, here's some things we want to think about. Phones, that's kind of the obvious one that we've already talked about a little bit, but phones are a huge distraction. Uh, even conversation through the phone, um, even hands-free can be a real distraction. I'll show you some examples of that here in a little bit. Um, but if the phone is a temptation to you, if that's something that you find yourself uh, being tempted to pick up or look at when you hear that phone ring or you hear that text go off and you're just, you just got to read it, you got to see who texts you. If you have that curiosity, you might think about silencing that phone, turning it off or maybe putting it in a, in a glove box. Uh, make it to where it's not a distraction for you that you're not tempted to pick that up and take your eyes off the, off the road or your hands off the wheel um, to use that phone. Uh, even the radio, the controls in the cars, um, you know, managing the radio, going and changing stations, um, that can take your eyes off the road and your hands off the wheel. That can take your mind off of looking at what's most important for the time and thinking more about the radio and, and using the controls in the car. Uh, that could be a possible distraction and that's something that you might want to adjust or take care of before you drive. If you can get things set, you know, get all the electronics set the way they need to be, put things in place where they need to be before you drive, you might prevent uh, finding yourself at risk while you're driving and controlling those different things. Um, even other passengers, conversations in the car, you might be deep in conversation, 
uh, and that can distract you, that can take your thoughts and, and things away, your focus away from focusing on what's on the road. And if you think about it, when you're driving down the road, there's all kinds of things coming at you. There's all kinds of signs, there's billboards, there's uh, in traffic, there's cars merging in front of you and around you. There's a lot to think about and you're processing a lot of information as you're driving and sometimes that conversation is just one more thing uh, to take some of your mind off of what's most important while you're driving. So think about you know, keeping those conversations uh, limited in a way that it doesn't get in the way of being a safe driver. Uh, even apps on our phones, setting GPS for, for driving routes and, and guidance in your driving, you might set those before you drive, plug those things in so that you don't have to manipulate your phone or those devices as you're driving. Um, those are some thoughts there. Um, other things that we can eliminate. How about reaching for items? Before you drive, could you put things in a location where you would need them and plan ahead uh, so that you don't have to reach down onto the floor or behind the seat behind you to try to grab something while you're driving? Try to think ahead and plan ahead. That might eliminate the risk there. Um, what about food? Do you ever eat, eat food and drive? Maybe it's holding a hamburger in one hand and steering with the other. Or maybe it's the, the soda that you're drinking as you're driving down the road and it possibly spills or topples over as you make a turn. Um, find a good location for those, make them secure, uh, put those in a place where it's not going to be a, a real issue to distract you or take you off the road. Even music, listening to music can be a distraction. I, I certainly like to listen to lots of music. I use the Spotify app sometimes and uh, I find that that can be a challenge when um, you're done listening to a certain band or you want to change a station of some kind. Um, you know, if you have to use that phone while you're driving, that can be a real problem. So you might want to plan ahead, get things set up um, in position before you drive that you don't, don't find yourself with a distraction there. Music itself, you might even be really, uh, really into the music. You might be really feeling it and, and that could become a distraction as well if you let it. So you have to stay focused. You have to listen to the music, but not let it get in the way of driving safe. Um, you might be like me when I drive a long time, sometimes I start thinking about things and I found myself at times deep in thought thinking about life or work or whatever else is out there and uh, there may be times when you're going down the roadway and realize wow I totally went past my exit I totally missed that just now um, if you find yourself in that situation you know that can be a distraction too because your awareness is down you're not paying attention to the surroundings around you you're more thinking deep on some other topic um, so, so watch, watch all that you do and, and, and stay aware and alert I've taught several defensive driving classes and in the last year I've asked people, well, you know, what distracts you? What kinds of things are out there that might distract you? And a lot of the parents say their kids in the back, back seats can be a real distraction to them and obviously they can. Um, they make noise, they can cry, they can fight like you see here in the picture. Kids are screaming and fighting in the back. That can be a huge distraction. Uh, they could ask lots of questions, they could need things while you're, while you're trying to drive. Um, that's something that uh, you obviously can't eliminate. You can't eliminate the kids. Um, but maybe there is a way to try to plan things ahead or put things in place or help them um, before you go driving in the car um, to try to eliminate those distractions. So as you can see, there's a lot of things going on as we drive. There's a lot of information we process that our brains are doing. And sometimes it's just that one more thing that can cause um, the real problem that could be a distraction for us and, and take our eyes off the road and our focus off the road. Uh, one other angle on this is drowsy driving. Uh, you could certainly be distracted by this. Uh, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're tired or fatigued, driving can become a distraction where you are similar to being impaired. Um, what happens with, with being drowsy is you're a little bit lethargic, your reaction time is diminished, and, and your reaction time might not be what it needs to be to keep yourself safe. And so getting adequate rest and focusing on a drive, especially a long drive, um, is important to prevent being distracted there. So the National Safety Council has done a lot of studies on, on the brain and, and how multitasking works, how, how drivers are able to talk and use phones and drive at the same time, even with hands-free devices. They've tried to do this and their study was called Understanding the Distracted Brain. And so they, they put people through a lot of tests. They did some psychological studies to see how the brain really works and if people can multitask as well as they really think they can. Um, they find that multitasking, no matter what it is, is still some kind of a brain drain. What happens is your brain is constantly uh, doing things. It runs your body, it runs your heart rate and your breathing and uh, all of your awareness and all of your senses. It's running all of that constantly 
And if you add several other things into the mix and try to multitask at the same time, sometimes you're not giving the amount of focus that you need to the one important thing, which could be your driving. And so they find that uh, driving, even with hands-free technology, um, it can still lead to some impaired performance. You're still doing multiple things at one time. And they looked at the differences between hands-free and handheld. There are some extra risks with holding that phone, but still having that conversation and talking while you're driving is enough to distract your brain uh, a little bit. So there's, there's a lot of information out there on that that they're learning from and trying to uh, raise awareness about. Uh, it's been found that uh, phones are a huge distraction, as we've talked about. Talking on the phone and driving at the same time, they see is about a four times the risk of being in a traffic accident. And uh, texting and driving, even more so, six times the risk. A uh, reason why is you're taking your focus off of what's most important, and that's driving and keeping yourself safe. And you're focusing on typing and with your thumbs, texting uh, conversation. You're thinking about the conversation back and forth. And what it does, it takes your focus off of, of the roadway. Uh, they say that can be uh, equivalent to a 0.16 blood alcohol content, similar to being impaired um, because you're doing so many other things that your, your brain power is diminished and uh, you're not able to, to really keep yourself focused on driving and safe at the time. Uh, texting obviously takes your eyes off the road. Uh, you're using your hands, you're taking one hand off the wheel at least to type and text and, and your brain is doing several other things at once. So if the phone is a distraction to you, you might reconsider um, Texting and driving, you might reconsider picking up that phone and taking that one second to look at it or, or respond to a text because there's some real risk you might be taking uh, for your life, your passengers, and other people around you. Um, that's something you might think about eliminating or, or silencing your phone so that it doesn't become a distraction to you. So what does driving distracted do? How does it get in the way of our safety and keeping ourselves safe in the vehicle? Well, it leads to a lack of awareness. We're just not as alert and aware when we're thinking about other things, when we're uh, picking up objects or doing, doing other things while driving. It, it limits our, our ability to stay focused and safe. Um, there's this thing called inattention blindness, where sometimes you're so focused on one thing that you don't see the obvious or that you don't react in time because your, your brain and your mind is focused on one other thing and not where it should be in driving. Uh, leads to slower response time. If there was a car that had to stop quickly in front of you or if an animal were to jump out in front of you, you may not be able to react in time because your mind is uh, a little bit slower, a little bit lethargic when you're thinking about other things. It takes your eyes off the road and you may have problems staying in the lane which can also lead to um, accidents. So, so don't take those risks. Think about preventing those things. When it comes to driving distracted, uh, what we all need to do, and, and I think every driver can do this, is admit that we can be distracted. Find those things in the car that we've talked about. Find those things that might affect you personally and eliminate them. You know, if it's turning things off, if it's planning your, your day ahead and planning your drive ahead, getting things in place where they need to be, managing what's in your car, um, do those things that you can do to eliminate that and identify the problems and remove those temptations that you don't get in, the, in a bad situation while you're driving. Um, plan before you get on the road and take personal responsibility for your driving, your driving actions, um, the things that are in the car, take responsibility for that. What it comes down to is when, you, when you're in that car, when you're behind the wheel and you put those keys in, you start that car up, it's on you, the driver, to take that personal responsibility and keep yourself and everyone in your vehicle and your passengers safe. So, so remember that um, to eliminate those and not let it get to you to, to be a problem for you as you're driving. Uh, some things we might ask ourselves, what could distract me? When you get in the car, look around before you take off. What is it that could be a distraction to me to take away my focus or my attention or, or diminish my awareness? What is it that could become a problem to me? And, to, and take care of them. Take care of them at that time. As you're driving down the road, you might ask, is this a risky maneuver? Is it risky for me to reach down and pick up that object that's on the floor? Or is it a risk to me to, to pick up my phone and look at, look at the phone really quick? Um, think about those things as you're driving. And you could ask yourself, what is the priority? What's the priority right now? Is it me getting from point A to point B, or is it getting to point A to point B safely? Is it me getting there without an accident or causing problems in traffic? Um, ask yourself about those things as you're driving. You might find some things um, that you might learn from about yourself that you can learn to prevent um, unsafe driving behaviors. So we've talked about a lot of things. We've covered you know, about 10 different types of distractions. We've covered the the risk of it. We've talked a lot about cell phones and their 
their issue with distracted driving. And now the, the, the hope is that from this webinar, you find some things that you learned from. And if there was something that stood out from you today that you, that you heard about or that reminded you about something, the goal is uh, that you take something away from it. So take a few of those things and learn to be a better, safer driver in all that you do. Uh, it might be just the cell phone. It might be other things in the car that you can manage. Um, but look for those things that you can do to keep yourself and others safe on the roads uh, by not being distracted. Find those things. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we want to eliminate all those distractions, anything that could get in the way. We want to make sure that we're always alert, always paying attention to where we're driving, uh, what's going on around us, uh, keeping that awareness up at all times, and realizing that it's not worth the risk um, to pick up a phone or make a quick text when you're putting your life and others' uh, safety at risk there. So, so think about the priorities, focus on what that is, and remember what's most important. The most important thing is really your life and your safety and your health. And uh, avoiding accident and injury, that's, that's the most important thing you can do um, each day. And so we want to want to emphasize that today about safe driving. Uh, with that, Jason, do you have any questions out there that you see? Brent, I've been being a bit of a distraction myself during this webinar. Are you a distraction? I, I was asking a couple of questions as we went through. And, and anyway, just let people know. Type your questions into the chat box if you've, if you've got those right now. But, uh, but I asked a question on there. Um, early in, the, in your presentation, you, you presented a statistic that said 9% of highway crashes are associated with distracted driving. And I asked the question, do you believe that statistic? What do you think? Do I, what do you think? I mean, what do you think the real number is? It could be higher. It could be higher because there could be people distracted that cause a crash and they don't find the real uh, yeah. reason why the crash happened. So it certainly could be higher. I, I would think it would be significantly higher than that because, uh, you know, just, just thinking of, of the mechanism of a lot of these crashes, it's distraction that starts that. Now, the person may not admit that they were, you know, leaning over to pick something up or they were adjusting the radio or whatever it was. Um, and uh, it's, it's easier to prove that a cell phone was involved because you can see, they can go back and get records if we need to on that. But I, uh, that's just kind of my, my opinion on yeah. that is it's probably significantly higher than that. It's probably a lot more prevalent than we hear or realize, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we look at uh, over... Over 40% of our crashes that we have involve backing, and uh, and you think about that, it's a really really slow speed, and and we're not uh, you know doing anything particularly um, tricky. Uh, maybe for some people backing is tricky, but almost almost half of our crashes involve backing, that really low speed thing, and I think distraction is what is involved in a lot of those. So, all right, I was just waiting for some some questions to come in, and I see none. So let's go for the final word. Everybody have a great day. Be safe about out there and, and think about what the priority is. That's what it's all about. So have a great day, everybody. Be safe. Good job, Brent. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Uh, just remember, Doug's going to be on here in a half an hour talking about work comp case management. So don't miss it. If you haven't signed up, send me an email right now and I'll get you a link. Jason at utahtrust.gov. Have a good day.